Hey everybody, my name is Nick and I run District North. I really, really appreciate all the followers I've been getting and actually is really awesome. Uh, please hit subscribe. It's, uh, it really warms my heart, especially up here in northern New Hampshire where it's cold. As you can see, the background's changed a little bit. Uh, it's because I'm inside of my, in my home now. Um, my studio is a little cold. I have a heating situation in there, so I had to relocate quickly back in here. Um, I am super grateful of all the, all the followers, and thanks again. It really means a lot to me. Please like and subscribe and, and, and talk. Uh, I do interact with the channel a lot, and I want to be a person that you know is, is on, on point with that stuff. It's not just uh, for the fun of it uh, anymore. I actually really like doing this, and I'd like to do more of them. So this video I want to do and go through uh, my, let's say, eight... Uh, I have a few like things thrown in there, but let's say eight core tried and true ways of creating better, crafting better t-shirt illustrations and designing t-shirts. I've been doing this for about 10 years, um, well a little bit longer in the apparel industry, and I've done a lot of work. Um, if you don't believe me, I made a quick video of just a small segment of the, of the designs I've done. I've actually calculated, I've made over 200,000 t-shirt designs. And I know a thing or two about t-shirt in the apparel industry right now. I actually consult with a few startup companies that do this. So I'm not just blowing smoke. I actually do know what I'm talking about. But if you don't believe me, here's a quick video showing you just a small segment of the stuff that I've been doing. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what I can do. Um, I know my designs aren't for everyone, but I do design a lot of different things and a lot of different styles, and that's a pretty small segment of the stuff that I've done. I've designed for colleges, I've designed for NHL, I've designed for Harley Davidson, I've designed for a lot of different places and a lot of big companies and small companies, and I've seen everything underneath the sun. I've done screen printing and directed garment printing, I've done CMYK printing. I just know a lot about it i've been in it for a while so these are my these are my things that are kind of tried and true and i want to i wanted to kind of share them with people because i see a lot of videos on t-shirt illustration and it's just like go to this site and you can download you know this image and plop it in and there's sometimes not anything wrong with that especially being a commercial artist you do have to like make your rent sometimes and just creating artwork is difficult but I wanted to show you kind of the ways that I create art and especially for t-shirt apparel and hopefully you can kind of pull that information and make it a little bit better on your own personal designs. Whether you want to be a t-shirt artist or you know at some point in your career you're probably going to have to design a t-shirt, knowing it is pretty is, is, is a lot of the battle you know of just knowing the tried and true methods. So um, let's jump in and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So these are my eight tips for how to craft better t-shirt illustrations. And there's a reason why I call them tried and true. I'm gonna pepper in some few things, and to be honest with you, it's not all just about design. It's a lot about uh, different aspects of just learning and trying to understand t-shirts in general. Uh, sometimes it, it actually comes down to really understanding how garments are made. And, and that's, that's just, if you wanna learn more, the more you can dive into it. Uh, it is a pretty big industry right now, so it is worth taking the time to actually take a few seconds. Um, so just keep that in mind. 
Uh, there is a disclaimer to this. You know, every single thing I say, and to be honest with you, I'm not an expert. I never want to be an expert. I'm always learning and trying to understand new ways of doing things. Every single thing I say can be broken and taken down. So before you comment with that's not how you do this or this is how I would do it, I understand there's a million ways to do things. Just because I did it my way doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And every single design, like, you know, thing that, that might be a tried and true for me might be different for you. And that's okay. Um, these are my tried and trues because I've been doing it for a long time and I've dealt with customers in the sense that they have specific things that they need and goals that they want to achieve. And these are kind of the things that really drive sales sometimes. If you think about customers, or they're just fun ways of thinking about designing instead of just designing, you know, um, a plain old T-shirt with text on it. You know, let's let's think about things that you know. You're the you're the master of your own kingdom, to be honest with you. So design whatever you'd like. But these are my tried and true. They're they're, you know, what I've learned over the past decade. So let's start with number one. Use the T-shirt color. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen this where people just blob on a bunch of inks and then they throw it on a shirt and it doesn't look organic or clean. Um, you know, there is an addendum to this, which is it can get tricky when you use the t-shirt color as part of what you're designing. Um, and I can get into that after, but you know, I mean, design for light and dark. So one of my first questions when I deal with clients is I usually ask them, what is the shirt color going to be? A lot of times they know offhand whether it's going to be a light shirt or a dark shirt. And this is this is their company's branding already. Maybe they use um, a black background for a lot of the stuff they do. Or if, if they hired me or hired a um, designer that knows branding identity and identity systems really well, they give them kind of the options and they design logos to be put on different different faces, whether it's light or dark. And so when you go into the t-shirt industry and you want to design something, think about that first. That's one of the first things that I do is I think about what color the shirt is because when they say we can only afford a three color shirt, to me that's a four color shirt because I'm going to use the color of the t-shirt in, integrated into the design. A great way of doing this if you're using a dark t-shirt is instead of having the dark lines um, be you know just just the the shirt um like a black color use the dark shirt color as those thick lines as your you know biggest you know your thickest darkest line is going to be the shirt color and it'll integrate really nicely sometimes you have to work around this maybe you have to add a stroke behind it to highlight it but there is workarounds that actually make the shirt design look a lot nicer if you integrate it um, it can be tricky when you have a client that doesn't really know what the shirt is going to be like and you have to kind of play both games here where it's light and dark. Or if you send them the file and then they go to print it and they decide last minute that it needs to be on a white shirt and you designed it on a black shirt and then it doesn't look good. Sometimes it can get tricky because the customer thinks you don't know what you're doing. I have to explain it to them sometimes. Well, I designed it to be on a dark shirt. We can happily switch it over. Um, and it doesn't take that long. You, you can kind of learn these ticks and tips and tricks quickly when you do a lot of t-shirt designs of how to like reversing those and using a dark color as that, you know, stroke color um, in the darkest parts of the image if you're going on a white background and then vice versa. If I use a light background, I usually do the opposite. I use the light of the shirt whether it's like a light blue, I use that as um, the lightest color in the design. So, um, or if it's a medium color, if it's like a muddy brown, I, I can use that for shadows while I use a dark brown and a light brown to be my, you know, my colors in between. Integrating the shirt color is really important. Two, line weight. I know this is, um, you know, discuss sometimes in design forums whether or not line weight is you know illustration wise line weight is very important it, it brings your eye in certain ways and so you have to use different types of line weight it's just as simple as that there are exceptions to this rule where there are designers that just design you know 
thick lines um, and that's it and there's nothing wrong with that but if you want diversity in your portfolio you're gonna have to use different line types and different drawing techniques I know the tried and true way of making a good design look really well is varying line weights and understanding that and kind of digging more deeper into that is really gonna help you when it comes to t-shirt designs also keep in mind with thin really really thin lines they're not going to show up when you're screen printing and that's because of the process that's used when you screen print something um, you basically put the screen down and ink goes through little tiny holes and because of that if you use really really thin lines and i'm usually talking about nothing below one point i try i try to go at least two points for everything that i have in my image uh, especially if they're using like 220 screens, it's usually okay. And I'm not a screen printer myself. I don't do a ton of screen printing, but I just know a lot about that stuff. And there are better better screens every day, so they're up you know, beyond that. But I usually design for 220 screens just to make sure because that's kind of the standard. Um, it depends on a lot of different factors, and I let the printer handle handle a lot of that. But, um, you know, I try to stay at least, you know, above one point, no matter what, um, it's usually two. But you also got to keep in mind that if you're designing really thin like that, subtlety kind of stinks on shirts sometimes. And this comes from the fact that you have to think of your client. I know that you can do a subtle t-shirt and it looks beautiful, but let's say they're selling on Facebook and their advertisement is this tiny little thing and you have a really subtle shirt and they're trying to sell those shirts, no one's going to be able to see what's going on and they're going to pass right through it. So keep that in mind when you're designing. Shrink it down to a little tiny size and see if it shows up. If it does, then you've probably got an okay shirt or at least able to, sh to visually show those things on Facebook or maybe it's a different type of ad platform that you're using. So keep that in mind that you want to always make sure that the image that you have is fairly high contrast and I'll, I'll come back to that later, but pretty high contrast and is visible in a really small area. It's just like when you're designing a logo as well. You want it to have a certain sense of um, scalability. So you want it to be small and you want it to look good big. So that's really, really important. Three learn yo shapes it actually is really really important i know that you can break this rule a lot but again keep in mind these are tried and trues so i look at like old rock star vintage t-shirts and that's kind of where i get a lot of my inspiration from the kind of grungy aesthetic it, you know things aren't perfect i know i've seen tons of cool shirts that have like printed stuff like right here it's really expensive um and you know it's cool to kind of play with things and i've done it too and i have fun but at the end of the day it's not really for everyone so if you want to kind of design to a broad base you're going to have to learn kind of these three shapes rectangles uh and triangles and you know portrait and landscape the difference between the two i design most of my stuff um using either your traditional portrait um setup which is a, a vertical uh, horizontal I'm sorry a vertical rectangle or a triangle and that comes down to layout design and how we visually look at things I like to have you know a good decent mix of things but more importantly having the triangle shape is really important and in, in when it comes to type hierarchy and that is another thing I'll touch again later on in this series because I want you to understand that learning layout is really important here too but learn these three shapes and really try to understand that you're gonna pick this shape before you really start coming up with ideas. And that's always what I do. I determine what type of shirt color it's going to be and what shape I'm gonna look for. And it really depends on, on how the visual, you know, how visually you wanna look at it. If, again, if we're coming back to Facebook ads, if you're using a horizontal, you know, um, layout, and let's say it's the top of this shirt right here and it's, really small and you have an image of the whole shirt and there's a lot of negative space a lot of white space kind of surrounding the thing you might not even be able to read it so keep that in mind you want things that are kind of big and bold especially if you want to see have more people see them number four limit your colors look direct to garment is great don't get me wrong i've seen some awesome direct to garment printing and it's it's but it's not awesome and 
I think it will be in the future. I think we're almost there. I think it's going to match screen printing pretty soon, especially with some of the watercolor inks that they're able to do right now. It's, it's starting to become really soft, and you're starting to really see some quality products. But it's not quite there yet. And there are some people that do it really well and some people that don't. So if we're kind of designing for everyone, and depending on where you're going to get things printed, I always limit the colors, number one, because customers usually don't want to pay for a bunch of colors because they understand how printing works. Each time you have a screen, you got to pay for it usually. So how screen, screen printing works is they create a screen for each one of your t-shirts. Uh, I'm sorry, each one of your colors. And so what they do is they print, you know, that color and then they, they you know, pull the ink on it and then they do another color. And that's how t-shirt printing, screen printing works. And because of that, it can increase the cost every time you add a color. Um, I try to keep no more than one to three colors. And I tell customers that I'll always try to keep it under two if they're like really budget friendly. I usually have a bold color, a high contrast color. And again, I'll touch on that a little bit later, but the high contrast color is gonna be like, let's say it's black, it's white, and then we have an accent color, yellow or red something that kind of makes it pop a little bit more. And again, you can break all these rules if you want. It's just these are my tried and trues to make sure that you have the best t-shirt design possible. Try to limit gradients too. This is kind of, uh, you know, like I said, direct to garment is getting really good and there's some CMYK printing that you can use gradients on. But again, it's not for everyone. Sometimes it can get really expensive. So try to limit your gradients. I usually only use one gradient if I have to, and it's usually because the client is requesting it. I don't necessarily love gradients. I feel like it has kind of this tacky feel sometimes. So I try to use them very seldomly, and this is mostly based in screen printing. So keep that in mind that I'm basing it off of, you know, my experience with screen printing. Number five. Uh, don't over texture. I've seen this so many times where it's so textured. I can't even read what the thing it says if it's like text um, it, it, it Sometimes bothers me a lot of what people do is they just they throw it on top of the thing afterwards And it's never even a thought they use vector to texture it sometimes which can look really bad I say 100% use Photoshop to texture your stuff and I'm going to be doing another video that's going to show you exactly how to do that to give it a nice patina. It doesn't have this over, you know, um, crazy texture feel where it feels really fake. Um, you want it to have a nice subtle uh, approach to it like it's slowly been worn over time. That's a really big thing right now and it was a couple years ago. It was even bigger a couple years ago. But people are still using it and they still like it. They like the way it feels when it, it feels like it's, it's something that's old, ephemeral, the vintage feel of it. So when you use texture, make sure you use Photoshop. Make sure you learn Photoshop enough to learn. That. I'm not a master in Photoshop either. I'm a vector guy. But I learned Photoshop specifically to do this because I had customers that wanted to blur it a little bit soften those edges and give a little bit of texture to it and it really really looks beautiful when it's screen printed properly um you know i mean i i, I don't over texture things and, and i can't pound that into people enough where it's just like you really need to learn uh subtle texture work because um there's just a ton of people that just throw textures on there like oh it looks vintage now it doesn't it looks super fake number six and this is where i'm coming back to study poster layout it actually is really important. Posters um, show, especially, and I'll, uh, you know, I mean, just try to understand that there are some great poster designers out there that know layout really well. They know type hierarchy, they know topography, and they have engaging visuals with high contrast images. So contrast is really important when you're designing a t-shirt. I know we don't normally talk about that when it comes to t-shirt designs, but having something high contrast really stands out from the crowd i understand that there are t-shirt designers that have completely different views than i do and i get it there are ways to break these rules and it just means that you have to work a lot harder and a lot longer to really solve those problems and i'm trying to give you the best understanding right away of how to design a t-shirt so use high contrast if you're using a really dark shirt like a black shirt there's a reason why white type looks really nice on dark shirts. There's a reason the opposite effect works. High contrast is high visibility. So you wanna make sure that those are really important things that you stick to. 
Number seven, study the human anatomy, okay? It is important to understand this, that women have nipples, men have nipples too, but if you're designing t-shirts, you need to understand that drawing two circles right over your nipples when you're designing a shirt is gonna look weird. Sometimes that is a funny and it's part of the joke, but for the most part, I've seen people that design things, um, you know, that, you know, it's a boom box or something and the two circles for the speakers are right on your boobs or on men, it's on your pecs. And it's, it's weird. It's just strange to me because I didn't think, did you not think about the human anatomy? And that, that comes down to the V shape that you're going to be designing the shirt too. Don't have too much pointing, right? You know, stay away from weird arrows and weird places. Understand that it's your body too. And you can look at your own body and say, okay, obviously I don't want people pointing at certain parts of my anatomy. Again, if it's part of the joke, that's a whole different issue, but I just want you to understand that just when you're looking at a human body, um, there are kind of areas that you should kind of stay away from if you're trying to design for everyone because people will point it out. It's happened to me. <laughs> um, eight, know your worth. And I know this isn't part of the designing side of it, but I wanted to throw it in there. The apparel industry is really booming right now and especially with print on demand being bigger and bigger and bigger and a lot of people are just throwing garbage out there it's a cash grab please take the time to learn uh, take the time to really try to craft great products because they're at the end of the day those companies are going to last a lot longer and like i said i know it's a cash grab and i know people are like i made a hundred thousand dollars selling t-shirts online cool but at the end of the day, I want to support brands that are quality products because they took the time to design them. So if someone asks you to do a t-shirt, take the time. Don't just slap a logo on there. Really think about how you want to engage customers and, and think about the quality of the garment as well. We're producing a ton of garbage. It's literally going all over the world. There are huge swaths of populations around the globe that have to deal with old t-shirts. So when you put something out in the world, make sure it's good quality. Don't just throw stuff on online and just hope that it's going to work. Know, you know, know how much you're worth and your time is worth as a designer and know also, you know, know the worth in the world, where your product is going to go. Support products that are good. Um, you know, I just want to say thanks for watching and this kind of goes back to know your worth um, as well, which is the apparel US, US market in, is the largest in the world. It literally is producing content, uh, I'm sorry, t-shirts all over the place. So retail in, in, in the US regular exceeds $15 billion. I believe it's like something like the, the three, uh, ten, out of the 10 wealthiest people, three of them own clothing manufacturing companies. So it's a big industry, and if you you know understand that, you shouldn't be being paid pennies on the dollar to create the actual design. Um, it just know your worth, know how much you're worth, and and know that they're making a lot of money off of this. And this goes outside of because there's a lot of people that hire remote workers in other areas. And honestly, I wanted to do an entire video about this because it is a systemic problem that we're trying to kind of combat in the industry right now where we're saying we don't want to just outsource to people and pay them pennies while we make a lot of money. And and I'm trying to get companies on board with this and try, really trying to understand that, you, that they're making a lot of money off your back. And if you live in Indonesia, which is a really big apparel um, design spot right now I want you to be making just as much money as if you're if you're working in the US so um, I'm there for you I want you to be elevated I know the cost of living is lower and that's why your prices are lower but it really is hurting US markets if you know companies go to Indonesia or Malaysia and they can get hire a designer for literally two dollars an hour to do what someone in the US would be doing for 30 or 40 or 50 so um, know your worth and, and know what you're talking about as well. About, you know, like by 2025, U.S. apparel markets are proje projected, as long as the world doesn't end before that, um, $380 billion. That, I mean, that's a huge, huge amount of money. Um, so know your worth, know what you're talking about, and, and really try to learn this, these kind of basis of design. It'll really help you and, and punch up your designs. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you got some information there. Please like and subscribe. I know I, I kind of went off the rails there at the end, but 
it's really important for this information to get out and I feel like there's not a lot of people doing it so thanks again it means a lot to me and uh, I'll have another process video coming up here so if you're into those that's super cool but uh, if you're into this that's awesome thank you guys thank you thank you thank you um, I'm really happy you like quality brands and quality content so thanks again bye